Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Two guys just waiting around for a Frankie Goes to Hollywood reunion tour. What's up, kids? You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Relax Cheeseman. And this is Chad, hot for teacher so wash. And on this episode, LinkedIn goes deep. Just the tip. <laughs> Biden takes on AI and somewhere Jimmy Hoffa is smiling. Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Happy post-Halloween. Post-Halloween. What is Portugal Halloween like? Uh, it's not the same. And we can talk about uh, how much traffic you guys got. I actually saw on Facebook, one of my friends had like a, a bunch of candy and they had literally no kids come by. So I thought that was that was interesting. But here, yep. it's not a door to door thing. Uh, the kids, we've got two schools that are here in our little little village of Cabanish. Uh, mm-hmm. During lunch, they actually do like a little parade downtown and they come into oh the uh the different cafes and restaurants and whatnot and then that's when they get candy and, and whatnot so that all the people that are there drinking and whatnot they give them stuff so that that was that was really cool that was really cool so uh, did, did you have did you have uh, some a uh, good flow of kids looking for uh full-size kit cats <laughs> decent flow i'm curious do the do the kids pr- do a parade or is it the adults yeah. or the community so the kids, the kids are just parading parade. around the street. Okay, that's yep. interesting. They, they come that's... to the streets. They go do their thing from business to business well, instead that's... of coming to your, your door. That's, that's a Fat Tuesday for you, a bunch of kids uh, <laughs> asking for beads. I mean, candy. Um, Margarita. Was, here you go. It was fine here. Uh, it yeah. snowed. It snowed, which, you know, whatever. Really? That's a thing. Uh, yeah, that so sucks. that meant. That meant hot cider with plenty of uh, Jack Daniels, uh, uh, you know. Which you have plenty of. In that, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the so Jeremy's six. I got a yeah. 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. Here's the breakdown. 17-year-old went to his girlfriend's house, did the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre outfit. Nice. Which was really good. He actually had a real chainsaw him. with no chain on it. He really, he went all out. <laughs> wore, a, wore a tie for the first time in his life, I think. Had the fake blood. My 14-year-old was too cool for school, didn't do anything, uh, which was kind of a bummer. And then the six-year-old, he was a Pokemon character I don't even know, went to his friend's house. And the kids, the problem with six-year-olds, they they do an all-out sprint for like 30 minutes to as many houses as they can. And then it's like crash and burn. The last hour is like (laughs) kids throwing shoes at each other, candy at other people, tears i'm gonna sit down and melt down and then it's like fuck it let's go home uh we do the whole thing with the with the candy at the door uh uh-huh. my wife being the fun police is like only take one um and then we have t- a ton of candy left because everybody just takes oh, one canadian death i guess oh, yeah, canadians. canadians yeah yeah socialism on halloween is always fun but it was great you know it's it's nice because i have a young kid <laughs> the older kids are are done but i get to travel back in time and re-experience, you know, Halloween with a six-year-old. Yeah, well, I, 
I had a new experience. Uh, we went to a Halloween party in Tavira. Julie and I went to, we dressed up as a goth couple, which I've never been in my life. Uh, and I wore, uh, I painted my fingernails for the very first time. Have you ever had your fingernails painted? I can't say that I've had my fingernails painted. No, that sounds. Well, I mean, being a girl dad, being a girl dad, a lot of dads have their, you know, their, their, their okay. girls uh, paint their, paint their fingernails, paint their toenails, okay. that kind of thing. And Emma was never really into that. She was soccer, softball, that kind of thing. So that never happened. So this is the first time I've ever had my fingernails painted. And I thought, oh, this is really cool. And it was, it was good with the, with the, the, uh, the costume. Uh, the mm -hmm. next day, it just bothered the shit out of me. I, I don't know why it just, it was, it was so foreign and alien. <laughs> so anyway, it, it was odd. 52 years so have, of my life. Have, the very first time. We have cardboard Chad. We have Euro Chad. And now we have goth Chad. I, I don't know. I Not don't a know. keeper. I think it's Not a keeper. I think it's a, it's a, it's a foot, a step too far. In my opinion, a step too far. In my opinion. Well, well we got a lot of show to cover, so... Shout out! Excellent. I'm going to go straight into Halloween shout outs. This is for uh, shout outs to Halloween treats. That's right. Thanks to uh, Elena, Abby, and the Skill Scout team for sending Julie and I a Halloween movie night at home. I'm sure you've got one, too. Uh, an yep. Amazon gift card for a free movie rental. I thought that was that was really cool. They gave us... A, they, we didn't get a trick. We got a treat. All right. Okay, uh, so I had an, another shout out, and then the, a news story crossed the desk, and and it mm. got replaced. So, as, okay. aside from family chat, I have two framed pictures in my office. Okay. One is an autographed uh, Larry Bird photo, and the other ah. is a signed Bobby Knight picture. Mm. Uh, the general passed uh, last night. We're recording this on a Thursday. So, as a kid from the Midwest uh, who was a teen hoops junkie, uh, Coach Knight was godlike for me. Uh, uh -huh. play, won a championship at Ohio State, uh, West Point, three national championships, uh, the last undefeated season for a, a major school, uh, Olympic mm -hmm. gold medal when, when, you know, college kids actually played. He coached Jordan, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, like all those guys from way back in the he day. He has accolades. He has he, accolades. He's got a resume. He's got a resume. Now yes. it's complicated. It's complicated, mm, uh, as many, so. yes. many famous people's uh, resumes are. So minutes after the announcement, my dad calls me. Uh, he's holding back tears, asking if I had heard the news. Uh, really impacted my dad, who's the same age as Bobby Knight. My dad yeah. was a coach in Indiana, which mm -hmm. you and I all had. You and I both had coaches who thought they were Bobby Knight, who wanted to be <laughs> Bobby Knight. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a dying breed. We'll never see another one uh, like him again. One of the first books I ever read that I remember was a, scene, a season on the brink uh, by, about the 83 season. If you haven't read that, uh, I recommend it. Again, mm -hmm. he was a complicated personality, but for me, his attributes far outweighed uh, his negatives. His past players largely love him. Uh, he will be missed and impacted my life uh, in a big way. Shout out to the general Robert Montgomery Knight. Rest in peace. <laughs> Uh, sounds like a Confederate general, Robert Montgomery Knight. I'm gonna. The next shout out is is almost a Cheeseman shout out. You're gonna love this because this is about uh, KFC KFC rejections. So on the socials, I saw a screenshot of a KFC job application rejection letter, which read like this: "Quote, uh -huh. thank you for your application to Team KFC. We're clucking delighted." <laughs> You're keen to join the flock. However, at this moment in time, your skills aren't the secret rep recipe the colonel is looking for. But we'd love to hear from you again. Give us a cluck if you would like to apply in the future. Best best wishes, Team KFC Dublin, end quote, which was followed by the user's posted comment, quote, mm -hmm. getting a rejection email with multiple fried chicken related puns is a new low for me. End quote. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> Shout yeah, out to KFC. Uh, they do great on Twitter. Not so great on rejection letters. Oh, just give me a coupon for a, a chicken little. That's all I want. Just give me a coupon. No, no, no. You don't have to you go know, through all the hoops. Bucket. I want a bucket. Don't need all the hoops. Well, yeah, if you're going to throw in a bucket, <laughs> then uh, some biscuits and gravy too. Uh, yeah. So my second shout out, last one. Uh, so yes. rest in peace to the general. Rest in peace 
apparently to WeWork. Uh, WeWork is planning to file for bankruptcy as early mm-hmm. as next week. They had uh, a net long-term debt of $2.9 billion and over $13 billion wow. in long-term leases as of June of this year. In case you missed it, WeWork was once valued at two, at forty-seven billion dollars. Uh, this back yeah. in two thousand nineteen. Now, that number is well under one hundred million dollars. Meanwhile, a dozen large office leasing deals in Manhattan this week, uh, ranging up to two hundred fifty thousand square feet each, are nearing completion by the end of the year. Pundits say these deals show signs of recovery for the Manhattan office leasing market. The end of WeWork. The beginning of a new boom in commercial real estate. I think this may be another coffin in the, another nail in the coffin of the work from home movement, unfortunately. Possibly. And uh, at this point, I don't know why, uh, don't know why Adam Newman is not in leg irons, for God's sakes. Jesus, talk about stealing. Uh, he just got a ton of money about, from Andreessen. I, He's got a new startup. Got, like, it's just crazy. What fucking idiots. I mean, yeah. what idiots? Anyway, anyway, <laughs> things that people do love other uh-huh. than Adam Newman is free stuff. That's right. T-shirts from JobGet. Oh, yeah. Beer from Aspen Tech Labs. Love those guys. Whiskey, two bottles of whiskey. One from Joel, one from me, from Text yeah. Colonel. And if it's your birthday, kids, yep, I got one of these handy. Uh, oh, it's yeah. uh, rum with plum, right? So Ooh. if you go to chadcheese.com. <laughs> Slash free register you so you could prospectively win in all the of it right now. I know I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. That's right. By the way, some of the names connected to this month's uh, winnings. Uh, yes. Bourbon goes to Monica Evji, friend of the show. Saw her at uh, HR Tech. Uh, beer goes to Nicole Adamson, uh, who I posted on LinkedIn. She texted back, this is the best text I've ever gotten in my life. That's what we're doing here on the show. We're creating miracles and spreading love. Changing lives. Yeah. And, uh, and one of our uh, interview favorites, Andrea Derler, uh, yes. won uh, the rum with Plum this year. So it was her birthday. Uh, more birthdays from this week go out to Elizabeth Hill, Dale Grand, Graham Ferguson, mm. Lewis Gleaner, Jarvis Carell, David Roddy, David Yorg, Eric Clemens, Ooh. Kayla Campbell, Libby Sartain, and Shally Steckroll. Those are Happy nice. another trip around the sun for some fans of Chad and Cheese. A lot of Let's Europeans in that list. A lot of Europeans on there. Yeah, our events sponsored by Shaker Recruitment Marketing Kids. That's right, Shaker Recruitment Marketing. Wherever we go, the sex goes with us. That's right, the sex, <laughs> the sexiness of Shaker Recruitment Marketing. So I'm going to be at TA Tech in London, December 4th through the 6th. If you are in London, if you're close to London, if you're even, I don't know, contiguous states, I don't know, in Europe, you need to be at London. You need to be in London at TA Tech. Uh, it's going to be a good few days. Uh, go to chadcheese.com slash events. You can register there. I'm going to be emceeing with uh, Kirsty Kelly, and there are going to be a long list of people that uh, you want to sit down and listen to, not to mention have drinks with. So come see us, chadcheese.com slash events. Europeans love us. How much do they love us? Maybe. Almost as much Maybe. as the Minnesotans, which brings us to an update from Minneapolis. <laughs> That's right, kids. You know the European show. You remember the uh, mar- recruitment marketing show, uh, the Colt Brand series. We got a new one coming, Chad. It's yes. the Chad and Cheese podcast does data. We're partnering with Toby Dayton from LinkUp. Uh, these guys are producing just kick-ass, in-depth numbers around employment, what the Fed mm-hmm. is saying, what ADP is saying, et cetera. They got their own numbers. Wall Street's finest are tapped into this data. We're going to talk to Toby once a month, figure out what's going on, bring it to the people, give it in terms that everyone understands. And I, for one, am really excited because I watch CNBC and Bloomberg and some of these commentary <laughs> on the numbers is really confusing and I'm not quite sure. I'm Googling stuff. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. excited to have Toby on the show to kind of kind of straighten us out and get us on a level playing field with some of Wall Street's finest. Yes. And, and just so that everybody knows out there, remember, we're on YouTube. And this is going to be a YouTube exclusive. That's right. It's not going to come out on the audio. We got way too much content that's happening there as it is. Uh, Plus, you want to see 
Toby, and you want to see the charts and graphs. That's he's going he's going to be uh, going over every single month. So as soon as the jobs data comes out, which is on a Friday, that next Monday we're going to do the show. So that next week you're going to get that wrap up of the Chad and Cheese does data with our friend Toby Date. Yep, that's YouTube.com backslash at Chad Cheese. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I'm excited, almost excited as Chad. A little fantasy football update. I'm moving up the charts, baby, and I'm excited. But here's our here's our leaderboard again. Factory Fix sponsors our addiction to fantasy football. Number one goes to again Michelle Obama Sargent. She is kicking ass. Seven and one, I think, is her record. Yeah, just killing it. Yes. Uh, number two, Marcy Malware. Number three, Joe Mason Dixon line. Number four, Jasper <laughs> the Friendly Ghost Banjart. Number five, Fuck. Dina Plum Promotion Paro. Dina got promoted at Plum uh, this week, so another uh, a congratulatory uh, message nice. for her in that. Uh, yes, we are plumbed out today. If you're not watching on YouTube, uh, you got to check it out. Uh, following her is Dean Blizzard of Osner. That's right. That's an Ozzy Osbourne reference. Number seven, King of the Jill Patterson. Number eight, Joel Osteen Cheeseman. Or Joel Ost- Osteen? Osteen. Osteen, yes. Osteen. Number nine, Chad not just a country in Africa, so wash. Number 10, Brent spiner Losi. Number 11, Dennis Tupper Lake. Number 12, Kristen Urband in the USA. And that is the leaderboard of, of Chad and Cheese. And that brings us Damn. to, oh my God, we got more, you know, you know the deal, Chad. We got more. What? what? Playoffs. Oh, God. That's right. Some layoffs. This is a Damn quick it. one because we're going to okay. talk about it on the European show next week. So tune in for that. But Germany's uh, Stepstone announced this week that it was laying off roughly, in quotes, 215 employees or about 5% of the company's 4,200 wow. strong workforce. Uh, Stepstone, a huge influential company there in Europe. So we will definitely talk about that. But that's a, that's a decent chunk of people whose lives will is. be impacted. Those are layoffs. Topics. All right, let's get political. President Biden has issued an executive order aimed at addressing the threats posed by artificial intelligence. The order seeks to prevent the misuse of AI for developing destructive weapons and supercharged cyber attacks. It also calls on Congress to pass data privacy legislation. The executive order establishes regulations such as requiring AI companies to conduct safety tests and share the results with the federal government. Industry standards, including watermarks for AI-enabled products, were introduced to enhance transparency. Government agencies will implement changes in their use of AI with a focus on addressing racial bias and civil rights abuses. Chad, your thoughts on Biden's executive order? Yeah, so it's it's really interesting as I, I start go, going through it to glean it. And there's a lot been that's been written on this in, in a very short amount of time. I think we should we should bring some some uh, people on the regulatory side of the house in so we can start talking a little bit more about this. It seems like we're always talking about this, but it's it's important. Um, we're starting to catch up, I think, slowly. To, to, to Europe, who's really been aggressive. I mean, they were back early this year, uh, starting to uh, starting to formulate what they wanted to do around AI and being able to create guardrails. Um, a, a couple of different uh, points in the executive order, uh, 7.3, which is strengthening AI and civil rights in the broader economy. So within the next year, of the date of the order, um, they want to prevent unlawful discrimination from AI used for hiring. Uh, the Secretary of Labor shall publish guidance uh, for the federal contractors, which we actually talked about before. What was the easiest way to make sure that this shit starts happening, whether it's anything? I don't care if it's bias, it's AI with bias. You go after the federal uh, the federal uh, contractors first because they're the ones taking uh, money from the federal government. They have higher standards that they have to meet, and it just makes sense. So that's that's one of the things that they're doing. But they're also looking at, which I thought was interesting and smart, increasing AI talent in the government. They actually are starting put to, to put together a plan 
uh, which will focus on, uh, you know, we all say small government's good. Not everybody does. But in this case, we need more boots on the ground, AI boots on the ground for government. Uh, so they're looking at actually trying to build uh, AI teams in all the different segments uh, of government. I, I think that is incredibly important and smart. And then as uh, the AP article says, you know, we looked at social media and we allowed it to go unfettered, which fucked us. And it's, it's continuing to, and we're starting to see, you know, whether they're intended consequences or unintended consequences, it doesn't matter. There's still fucking consequences. Uh, yeah. We need to try to skate to the puck on this one, right? We need to look around corners. We need to try to figure out how this can be best used and how it could prospectively be used for evil. And uh, that was one of the things that, that Biden was focused on. What can we do on the good side and how can we protect against the bad, uh, deep fake kind of shit that will, it will happen? Yeah. Uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Uh, someone once Always told is. me, um, yeah. uh, I was interested. You mentioned some, some pros and, and comments, uh, our, our buddy, Ryan Steelberg, uh, at baritone CEO and president posted on LinkedIn quote, president Biden's recent AI executive order marks a significant step towards a future where AI becomes inseparable from ethical and responsible considerations rather than just a technological advancement. You talked about mm -hmm. social media. You talked about, uh, you should have talked about the internet. The internet forever. I was like, <laughs> yes. let it go, baby. Yeah. Let it yeah. roll. Let it roll. See yeah. how the, the the chips fall. Try to um, herd those fucking cats. Obvious, Jesus. Obviously, you know, that was, that was a difficult one. Now that, the internet's mm -hmm. obviously more global uh, than just the US. And I feel that AI is, is similar. Um, Yes. We're in a political, we're in a political year, a year from this month, we'll be electing a new president. Biden's favorables aren't great. Uh, he's, he's entrenched in two wars. He's entrenched in some inflationary issues. And it's, so things are challenging. The, the political cynic in me says, what's the political reason to do this? I think to take big tech to task. Google, look, that's who this is going to impact. Google, AW, like Amazon, Microsoft. Um, and they've been under pressure from the right in terms of free speech and red regulation. So I don't know if it's like a, a, a workaround with what he thinks the Republicans will do on big tech. I worry about how, uh, how, how much teeth this is going to have. You mentioned federal contracts. So there, there is some precedent to say, Hey, if you're doing, if you're doing work with the federal government, these are regulations you're going to have to deal with, but I don't know. Yeah. Do, is is Congress going to finance this? Is are they going to pass laws around this? Is there a new uh, department that's going to be created, the AI regulation department? Um, the CEO from Workday was quoted as saying, "Like this is going to be a tremendous amount of work uh, and cost to us to provide data and <clears throat> and report back to the government." And you're going to hear that more and more. But smaller businesses are they are they sh shielded from reporting? Like, there's a lot of stuff to be worked out around this. And at the end of the day, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea do not have to abide by any of these regulations. So that that concerns me. Like, are we going to hinder our development of AI while they run wild with it and innovate beyond what we're doing? So. I think it's a great first step. I think it's some great um, bully pulpit uh, setting the stage for what we should be and how we should be looking at AI. I just think the devil's in the details on this. How is it going to be played out? Who's going to be uh, put under uh, scrutiny of this? How are they going to report to it? What's it going to cost? Who's going to finance this? Who's going to actually police? Because in talks with our buddy Keith Sonderling at EEOC, if you don't have the money and the resources uh, it's really hard to regulate and and take people to tasks. And even if they do, you and I ongoing conversationally talk about, wow, that was that was coins in the couch cushions kind of fees, mm -hmm. right? So are there going to yeah. be real teeth around punishments, around AI abuses? Are there going to be people in orange jumpsuits? These things all have to play out. I think the rhetoric was great. Everyone seems to kind of be behind it. I just think externally and the details around this are going to be really hard uh, to iron out. We're just going to have to wait to see 
see what it looks like, but it's a great first step. Yeah. I, I think it's the, the interesting thing is you talked about uh, Biden's favorability rating. Uh, the only ones lower are, are I think Trump's and uh, Congress I and mean, Congress has the shittiest fucking uh, favorability rating that's out there. Um, we're, we're not entrenched in two wars. We are, we are funding but we're not actually losing American okay. lives. So watch your rhetoric around that, if you would, please. Uh, okay. the, the, the two segments of AI is incredibly important. And I think you're right. But I think this isn't, these aren't th two things that happen together. First and foremost, uh, China is already creating um, uh, guardrails around their own AI for their own society, right? Uh, now for the other society, the way that they attack from a defensive and or from an offensive standpoint, they're going to have entirely different rules for that. Right. And I think we will as well. So I don't think this is going to hamper us uh, at all. And all of those companies who are making record profits and they want to make more money off of AI. Well, these are the things that you have to do to ensure that, you know, it, it happens without having a Cambridge Analytica moment. I mean, these are all the things that we have to do to stay responsible. We can't just do this uh, in an unfettered way. So yeah, I, I get it. Uh, companies don't want to spend more money, but they want to make more money using the AI. Well, you're going to have to spend money to be able to make money. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So I'll backtrack my entrenched uh, statement and say divided over two fronts, I guess. Um, Man. I'm curious politically, do you think there's a reason to do this politically? The AI piece? Yeah, to come out with a statement and to take sort of the lead role on regulations around AI? Do you think that was I don't think I don't think from no? a political standpoint there is. I don't think there is no. from a political standpoint. I think there is just from the standpoint of social responsibility. It's our responsibility and it's our government's responsibility to take care of the citizenry, which did not happen uh, on the social media side of the house or, or the internet side of the house, right? We, we didn't look to try to get around the corners. We just thought, oh, wow, this is a really cool toy we get to play with. Yeah. Um, problem is we could use that toy to bash people's heads in with, which is, which is what, what happened, unfortunately. So I, I don't, I'm sure there are some political angles, but there are some, there, there are many other angles that he, he I think he could take, uh, away from AI versus, mm -hmm. you know, trying, trying to fight this fight, but yeah. getting the president to do an executive order means it's incredibly important to him because he shouldn't be doing this. The Congress should be doing it. The problem is our, our Congress right now is in total, complete disarray. Yeah. I mean, we're just now starting to talk about social media and regulating yeah. kids and it's 15 years hence of social media and well, even yeah. longer than that. But so how long is this going to take? Jeez. And, and, Based on what know, I'm hearing in terms of how fast AI will ramp up in terms of being smarter and smarter and smarter, I don't know if government can keep up. It'll be interesting, interesting to watch. Yeah, well, and we also had one uh, Google executive said that uh, general AI is within five years, which is fucking crazy because we're talking about sentient AI, right? The, the, the generative AI that we're, we're dealing with right now, nothing nothing compared to what general ai is going to look like be afraid be very afraid well from one ai bully to another i don't know if that was the right uh transition or not but let's talk about linkedin uh they're launching a new hiring integration called crm connect set to be available in early 2024 this integration connects linkedin recruiter with candidate relationship management systems to simplify and streamline the recruiting process. It allows for sharing of data between these systems while respecting LinkedIn's members' data privacy settings, or so they say. The integration is launching with partners like Aviture, Beamery, Clinch, your favorite eightfold, Jobvite, and Radency, enhancing efficiency for LinkedIn recruiter seat holders who use these particular CRMs. CRM Connect promises to reduce the time spent switching between systems, provide recruiters with accurate and up-to-date candidate insights, and improve the ability to nurture candidates effectively by centralizing the information. Chad, this is not just the tip. This is LinkedIn going deep. Just the tip. <laughs> what are your thoughts? So, so the big question for me was, you know, it, it didn't, it, it seemed interesting just from a, a connectivity standpoint, but it, 
what's the best way, as the, they say in the article, to, quote, reduce time switching across systems? What's the best way to do that? The best way is to become the fucking system. So I don't think this is a technical exercise with partners because it feels more like an audition. Seriously, we all know that LinkedIn is like crack for, for recruiters. So build yep. out the, CM, the CRM functionality or just acquire one that you've already connected with so that you can expand wallet share for a more robust offering. So while auditioning, keep your competition close, pull in their massive data sets, and maybe even unleash a little open AI to the data to better understand aggregate recruiter uh, behaviors, messaging, and anything else that you think the, the LLMs might be able to dig into. So no, I don't believe this is purely about connecting to Avature, Beamery, Clinch, job fight and radiancy. I think this is an audition and I, and I do have a, a, a funny follow-up here. I was, uh, I was speaking to a friend of mine about this to, to, to see what they thought about it. And, and they had one comment quote, eightfold is the Theranos of talent acquisition in a complete laughing stock. Plus Beamery has no future ahead. End quote. So apparently they don't think Eightfold or Beamery have a chance in hell in making the, the, the LinkedIn Microsoft team through this audition. 60% uh -huh. of the time it works every time. So you think this is audition for an acquisition? Yes. Essentially. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take that a little bit, but spin it in, in this way. LinkedIn's new CRM Connect product uh, is both defensive and offensive. It's defensive because they see CRMs as a threat to attention and mm -hmm. thus a competitor to their business uh, that wants you to be on LinkedIn all the time. They want to keep you there, making all your CRM data available, and LinkedIn accomplishes that. To me, that's a no-brainer. They should have done that a long time ago. However, I do think this is offensive. You think it's an audition. I think it may be just a straight up theft uh, that we're looking at. Like, remember, <laughs> remember the API playbook. Give yes. third parties access to your platform, learn mm -hmm. all about them, then shut them down launch a, by launching a competing product. Take, LinkedIn used take, to make access take. to profiles pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Then they throttled it. Then they killed it. Then companies like HiQ, who wanted to scrape the data, got sued into oblivion. Um, if you mm -hmm. think the same thing or something similar isn't happening here, then I've okay. got a bridge in Brooklyn uh, that I'd like to sell you. Partner with LinkedIn at your own risk. Buy is definitely an option, but so is let's just make it ourselves once we understand what customers want, what they're using, <laughs> what they search for. Like you're going to you're going to open the kimono. LinkedIn's going to get a good view and they're going to crush you. Yeah, or at least yeah. That's I just the, the I just playbook, I think. don't think. I mean, we just saw LinkedIn. They just they just had a layoff, right? So they're starting to they're starting to come down. I think from a resource standpoint, especially when you're the size of LinkedIn, you don't build something like this, right? You go ahead and you see much like marketplaces that we talk about with applicant tracking systems. You see which ones work the best, which ones get the best traction and the best uh, the best data flow that you can have back and forth. I think this is a pure audition for an acquisition play, but I agree. There's definitely an offensive defensive mode that's here. Uh, I think to me, when they put this article out and I was reading it, I'm like, okay, I'm reading between the lines. There's a lot not being said. Mm-hmm. Did it surprise you as much as it did me that seek out in some form or fashion was not included in this integration? No, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. That is a very good point, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the data and the tech and obviously the a new connection. Yeah, the, <laughs> the relationship Anoop's connection yeah. with Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that bodes well for seek out that they weren't involved uh, in this integration. Well, anyway, we'll have to watch and find out, but either way, LinkedIn is dangerous uh, and beware. Yes. Beware kids. We'll be right back. It's crack.
Chad, how about a game of Who'd You Rather? <laughs> That's yes. right. That's right. You know, you know how we play the game, kids. We talk about two companies that have recently gotten funding, and then Chad and I <laughs> will tell you who we'd rather. Well, in this first corner, we have Miami-based Traba. They've secured $22 million in funding and a round led by Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. Many of you will know the name Peter Thiel, and if not, go watch The Social Network. Traba focuses mm -hmm. on the light industrial staffing sector and focuses on challenges like outdated processes and low fill rates. They report a 99% fill rate and less than a day to fill open positions with above minimum wage average pay. The latest investment brings total funding to $43.6 million and positions the company for nationwide expansion. They employ 75 people. And in the opposing corner, Yurko, an Indianapolis-based startup, has secured $2 million in seed funding. The round was led by Ground Game Ventures with Ground Game Ventures managing partner and friend of the pod, Amon Brar, joining Yurko's board of directors. Yurko offers a text messaging platform for employers to communicate with non-desk employees, such as those without work-related email accounts. The funding will be used to hire engineering and marketing staff. They employ 10 people. So, Chad, I love a good David versus Goliath. Who'd you rather? So, who'd you rather between Yurko and Traba? So Traba feels like a localized model of factory fix. Obviously, they're going to expand out uh, nationwide, but they feel, they, they feel kind of factory fix-ish. Um, and you know how much we love the boys over at Factory Fix. So trying to fill light industrial roles quickly can be performed faster than using staffing agencies. And I think that that is, is the big key. And that's their, their, their big market advantage. Um, Yorco is... Uh, a very, very young company, no question. Um, but at this point, they're nothing more than just a basic platform feature. They're not a business. Uh, communication is big, but this is one aspect of a platform that needs to wrap into technology like a Traba or Factory Fix, which connects you to your current staff and or the external marketplace. So I see companies like Traba and Factory Fix are the future of staffing because, as I said earlier, it's about speed of identifying, notifying, and filling shifts, which is why I would Traba all day. What are you doing, step bro? All right. So this is almost a who'd you rather between Peter Thiel and Amon Brar, uh, who we who we love, by the way. <laughs> I, I uh, would so not Peter go that far because I would have picked Amon. Pete, I would have picked Pete, Amon. Pete, <laughs> Peter Thiel has companies like Facebook, PayPal, Stripe, Reddit, Quora, uh, and the like in his portfolio. So that's pretty that's tough money. To, to go against. Uh, Amon is great at bootstrapping companies and then flipping them for 10x for a reasonable amount, a la his company Canvas, who was acquired by Jobvite. So while I mm -hmm. think they're both going to be winners, uh, and I, I want to go with the home team from Indianapolis, uh, I think if I want to make a billion dollars, I'm going to go with Teal. Uh, if I want to make $25 million, I'm going to go with Amon. So while I'd rather both of them, I think that the money, the money, Chad, is going to win out. And I'm going to go with Traba. Uh -huh. All right. That is another episode of <laughs> Who'd You Rather? Now let's get into some union news. The United Auto Workers, or the UAW as the kids call them, have struck a deal with Detroit automakers. The agreement includes significant benefits for UAW members, such as a 25% compounded raise over four and a half years, increased 401k company contributions, and enhanced profit sharing bonuses. The contracts also include an immediate 11% raise and massive pay increase for those lowest paid workers. Temps hired this year, for example, will see a 150% wage increase over the four and a half years of the contract. This is happening in light of recent news around pay transparency laws saying the growth of advertised wages for new hires is slowing 
and even reversing with some companies now posting lower pay ranges and around 30 to 40 percent of employers not complying with laws requiring salary ranges at all. Chad, what are your thoughts on the news from Detroit and the pay transparency update? So I really feel like it's finally the time of the worker. Oh, do you? I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! (laughs) So we've endured four decades of bullshit economic policies where the dollar stayed in the ivory tower and didn't trickle down. We have assholes like Josh Burson and Johnny Taylor driving anti-work sentiment, saying companies will go out of business as the the C-suite and their boards uh, buy more vacation homes and yachts and their compensation grows by 1,500% compared to the people on the front fucking lines actually doing the work getting 18%. So the UAW is striking a narrative that is counter- to the pull yourself up by your bootstraps narrative that we got suckered into back in the Gen Mm -hmm. X days because it's fucking hard to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you can't afford fucking boots. So we're also seeing, which is really cool, outside of GM, Ford, and Stellantis, that Kaiser Permanente, CVS, Walgreens, Mack Trucks, um, they're all starting to strike as well because they're seeing what is happening here. And that, again, they're mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. Uh, That to me is exciting. Um, On the pay transparency side of the house, I watched watched the interview and I read some of the articles around this and they're talking about, oh, pay transparency isn't working. No, dumbasses. Companies... Companies are just pulling down. It's it's a negotiation thing, right? It's kind of like yeah. Burson said, oh, yes, I would like to have a four-day work week. Well, yeah, asshole. It was a part of the negotiation, something that you can actually pull off the table, right? If you uh-huh. put the salary up at the level you're actually paying people right now, that's the starting point. So what do they do? They bring it down so that the starting point is down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all of this is literally just a mirage. And for all of you idiots that are out there that don't understand how to negotiate, this is going to be really surprising for you. For all of us Mm -hmm. who understand business and we've been doing this for fucking years, guess what? It's, it seems normal. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm shocked, Chad. I'm (laughs) shocked that they got this done. Uh, When we first touched on this months ago, I said, they're a paper tiger. They're going to move jobs to Mexico. They're going to automate everything. Um, I am impressed and shocked that this got done. Uh, mm-hmm. Big win for workers. Big, big win for labor. Holy shit. Yes. Um, yes. You're going to see more unionization. You're going to see uh, stress from Tesla workers and uh, right to work states want to unionize or yes. they'll just fucking go to to Detroit, right? I mean, if you mm-hmm. want to see an increase in, in applications uh, to the big three of talented people, this is it. Uh, this is incredible news for unions, for workers that have been get, getting kicked in the nuts, proverbially, uh, for decades. Yes. It's a big win for Joe Biden. Um, I said early on when Joe Biden went to go visit, I said, look, both of these candidates uh, need to try to you know, elbow their way into getting this deal done. Um, You know, Trump went to a non-union shop. Biden went to (laughs) Detroit and, you know, picketed for, I don't know, 28 seconds or something. But at least he was there and the photo op was great. He can claim victory. He's going to be on the campaign trail in these swing states like Michigan, talking about union wages and the the rise Mm -hmm. of unions and the common man and the working man and woman. So big win for Joe Biden uh, and the Democrats, in my mind. Loss for Tesla. They're going to have a hard time uh, keeping unions at bay, I think. Um, obviously, some shareholders will probably take it with greater salaries, expenses. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so far, early on, uh, stock prices haven't uh, declined much. So Wall Street, for the most part, is okay with what's going on, or at least priced it in. But I, I'm ultimately just shocked that this happened. And it, it proves, once again, like if you have leverage, 
you can get this shit done. If you're UPS and people need their packages, if you're making cars and, and people want to drive new cars, then you mm-hmm. can you can get the the salad that you want. But before you strike and do all this stuff, have leverage and have the numbers to do it. They did this really strategically. They rolled yes. out the they rolled out the the closings of plants. They tightened the screws, you know, more and more, kind of slowly. It was just yeah. brilliant. I, I am super impressed with the union leadership. Um, I think they totally stuck it to the leadership of these companies. The workers won. Uh, if you're a Democrat, you're happy today about Joe Biden's prospects of being president. <laughs> like, I, I I'm surprised. I'm shocked. The, the Senate, the only cynic in me is that the car company said, okay, well, it, it'll take us five to seven years to automate. It'll take us that long to get to Mexico. Let's just give them what they want now uh, and have a have sort of a slow roll into oblivion. Uh, but let's make them happy today. But until that happens, this is a huge victory for unions. Uh, the trade hey, transparency thing. Look, if you're an employer, it is a good thing to put salary ranges in your job postings. Like you get yeah. better applicants, you get more applicants. Yes. They their retention at showing is better. Like just oh, yeah. fucking that's it's just so stupid. Um, I know what we're seeing in, in pay transparency. Companies just need to suck it up and and do it. Uh, if you're not going to do it, Indeed is going to do it for you anyway. So you might as well fucking get on board uh, with pay <laughs> transparency. But totally impressed with the union. I'm blown away yeah. that they got this done. Good for them. I, and I got to tell you that Sean Fain, who literally took that position because the 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 other guys got put in jail. Okay. Uh, and there's more transparency around the UAW today, and it has to be. I think this is like a new movement for uh, collective bargaining and and unions and hope to see this move through. And again, you, you mentioned Tesla. Um, mm-hmm. I, there, there are so many industries that are out there today who really need representation because the little guy is getting battered left and right. So yes, this is, I think this is a very big one. And I'm, I'm excited uh, for not just those workers, but workers throughout the entire United States. Big, big applause for the union. Union there in Detroit. Very well done. Very well done. Let's take another break. And we'll talk about OnlyFans for the first time on the show. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll be we'll be right back, everybody. All right, Chad. How about a little OnlyFans news? <laughs> Imagine That's that. right. Megan Gaither, an English teacher and varsity cheerleading coach at St. Clair High School in Missouri, was put on leave after it was revealed that she was selling explicit content on OnlyFans to supplement her income. Gaither, 31, cited financial struggles and the need to repay over 125000 in student loans as the reasons for her moonlighting job. Her total income last year, including a coaching stipend, was about $47,500. Gaither said she had deactivated OnlyFans account after a student left a note under her classroom door hinting that they knew about her secret. Her colleague, Brianna Coppage, a former teacher at the same school, resigned after it was discovered that she was running an OnlyFans page with her husband, Chad. More OnlyFans drama. What are your thoughts on the latest? So I, I automatically thought of Van Halen's Hot for Teacher, the, the video, when I started reading this. Because, I mean, if you think about it, do you know how much more attentive I would have been in class as a, as a teenager with, with these teachers? Yes, uh, the teacher. yeah. <laughs> but seriously, uh, what did those ladies do that was illegal? They, it, nothing. Then, then why are school systems allowed to fire them or, or push them? into, you know, into actually quitting. Uh, Code of conduct happens while at work. When you have no control of the code of conduct that happens at my house, Mm -hmm. okay? If I'm not doing something illegal, then you can just fuck off. Plus, did it hamper the teacher's performance? Uh, It's amazing how we shame women for doing things that are not illegal or we make them illegal. Like, I don't know, healthcare choices for their own damn body. if I, if I were them, I would sue the pants off of these uh, these uh, school systems. See what I did there? Uh-huh. I, I like that. That's good. That's good. That's, that's not too I bad, don't get it, yeah. dude. I just don't get it. They don't make a lot of money. 
Well, we finally found the 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 killer the 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 killer app for OnlyFans that's going to put it under is Joe Biden's uh, student loan forgiveness. That's going to put OnlyFans out of business if all these student loans <laughs> uh, get excused. I'm just kidding. Doubtful. I'm just kidding. Kinda <laughs> doubtful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's let's go. Let's go back to last week's uh, Clona AI. Uh, Riley Reed's yes. new venture. By the way, I reached out to Riley yes. Reed's people for an interview. Uh, we'll see if they reply. So far, it's crickets. Uh, so, so Riley, call that. us. Call me, Good Riley. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, I think OnlyFans is going to be disrupted by cheaper, naughtier options like Clona. Uh, I really don't think we're going to be talking about OnlyFans in 10 years in the way that we are today. AI is going to take this over. VR is going to be a thing. Uh, body suits with you know vibrating condoms. Who knows what the future holds? But it's not good for OnlyFans unless they make some serious acquisitions. Um, but the yes. girlfriend experience is coming, and it's not in the form of uh, teachers moonlighting uh, with booby booby pictures. Second thing is, can we start paying <laughs> teachers like the rock stars uh, that they are? Look, it's an election great, year. Yeah. I want to hear some governors talking about six-figure salaries for entry-level teachers. That's what I want to hear. You want to see yeah. states? Yeah. You want to see states start outperforming every other state? You want to see kids from all backgrounds start to outperform their peers? You want to see best mm -hmm. of the best college grads go into teaching? We'll start paying them like the badasses that they are, and that's why yeah. Chad and I are running as co-governor. In the state of Indiana this fall. That's right, kids. Oh, vote, Jesus. vote Chad and Cheese. Vote Chad and Cheese. We're voting. <laughs> we're running for co-governor of Indiana. Oh my God, Coach Knight, rest in peace. We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? A podcast. The Chad. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho. Be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!